So the title of my message this morning is You Live From Who You Are. We're going to drill into the, the stuff of identity today and understand who we are in God, how he created us to be. I'm going to make some statements at the beginning of this message that are going to cause you to go, oh, really? Absolutely. Because I know when preaching, when ministering a message, if you agree with everything I say, then I'm not saying everything right. It should challenge you. It's very easy to preach a message that you all agree with. Let's practice, see how it goes. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. You see how easy that is? Yes. God loves you. Amen. Yes. Wow. You know, let, let's get into those areas of scripture as we have done for so long now that challenge to bring change. You cannot consistently behave in a manner inconsistent to how you see yourself. You cannot consistently behave in a manner inconsistent with how you see yourself. You cannot live effectively, nor can you live truthfully outside how you see your identity. Now, I'm going to say that again because that one will rock your boat. When I say you cannot, that you can imagine they're big words. You cannot. You can not live effectively, nor can you live truthfully outside how you see your identity. Whatever and wherever you see the limit on how God has made you is the very limit of where your identity and where God can take you. And so you can imagine identity is very important. Identity. As we look at a world that is confused with its identity, I'm looking at a church to see, not here, I'm talking about the church. I think the church at the moment is confused with its identity. If identity is that important, then there has to be a starting point. There has to be a place where you start to know who you are. Who am I? What am I? And it's not generic. Jesus will give you a stone when you're in glory with him. It will have a new name on it, a name known only between you and him. And that name will identify who you are. Your name is not my name. Nor is Jesus. Jesus has the name that is above every other name. And your name, who you are, matters. God is in the name changing business. And he is changing your name. He is building your identity. But there has to be a starting point. Could you imagine if you... You never start something in the middle or the end, do you? You start it at the beginning. I was an athlete when I was younger. Can you believe that? You wouldn't believe that today. There you go, Ron. Huh? He's always wanting me to go on these Saturday morning walks with him. And uh, I, I've, I've decided I'm going to go with him. But I think it would be good if I drove the car beside him and, and I could pace him and say, now, Ron, you're not going fast enough. You know, be a little critical of him there. But uh, he would love me to do that, I'm sure. You know, there's got to be a starting point. Well, there is. The word says in 1 John 4, verse 4, you are of God. You are of God. You are of God. There's your starting point. For your identity to be all it can be. Now I'm going to read this out again to you because I want you to get it. Took a while to write it so we'd get it right. 
wherever you see the limit of your identity, wherever you see, not me see, not someone else see, where you see, wherever you see the limit of your identity is how far and is the limit of where your identity and when God can take you. But Lord, I want, I, I want to do this for you. God says, but you don't even see yourself as able. Well, I'm not able, Lord. Can you help me? Can you? No, 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 no. It's not about helping you do that. It's helping you be that. I've discovered a long time ago, it's not what I do. It's who I am. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Now, the following words cannot be received to their level with a person that does not understand their identity. When I say these words to you, they mean less to a person that does not have a grip on their identity and they mean more to a person that does because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. If you have a grip on who you are, then those words will make all the difference in the world. So let's have a look at it again. You, this is my starting point to my identity. You are, I am of God. I am of God. I am not of being a pastor. I am not of being a father. I am not of being a friend. I am not of Australia. Those things are all important. And they are all part of my life. But I am of God. That's who I am of. You are of God. And that changes everything. You see, if my identity is less than it ought to be, I will believe God less for what he can do in me. The word for the year is believe. Believe is not agree. Believe is to acknowledge the truth. That's what believe means. Remember I said to you the other week, C.S. Lewis made the comment that the English language has done more to brutalise the scriptures than any translation could ever do. We have brutalised words like believe. It does not mean agree. You can agree that God exists. You can agree in Jesus you can agree to go to church. You can agree to be a friend. Or you can acknowledge the truth of these things. And they will change your life. Now, we need to come to a place in this session together, in this message, where we don't only agree that I am a child of God, but I believe and acknowledge that I am. And who I am. Which will change your thinking, change your heart, change your mind. And you will believe more for what God can do in you. My people have not because they, and they ask not because they don't believe their identity is befitting a move of God. You are of God. That's the starting point. If my son behaves as a stranger, then he will never receive the direction of his father. When we behave like strangers to our Father, God, we can never receive the direction of the Holy Spirit. And I find it is those very same people that come to me and say, God told me. And I'll go, how could God have told you? You have no idea who you are in him. You're off being reckless. You're making these silly decisions, but God told you? I find that challenging. I am a son. What does it say here? You are of God. You are of God. I am a son because he is my father. Can you give the Lord a clap offering for that, please? Praise the Lord. I am a son. You see, when my son walks into my house, he, do, he does not walk in like a stranger. Oh, no. 
And as you know, the first thing he does is ignore me and go straight to the fridge. But <laughs> then when he is completely satisfied, he says, would you like me to make you something too? No, just sit down. <laughs> I am a son because he is my father. First Peter says, but you are a chosen generation. Well, hang a bit. Who's he talking to? He's talking to Israel and the Gentiles. This is in the the new covenant where we have been grafted in. But you are a chosen generation. I'm a chosen. This is something I've learned. Now, I I love, I was watching the series The Crown, which is a fantastic series to watch. And uh, looking back into the 50s and the 60s, and I'm looking at them. I would love, there are sometimes I look at an old movie and I go, I'd love to have been in that generation. Or I think to myself, I'm a bit of a techno guy, uh, or a little anyway. I can't say that too uh, strong because young people go, no, you're not into technology. You're only into technology for people that are over 60. But anyone under 35, you're not into technology. <laughs> but I think I am. And there are times I imagine what it must be like in 50 or 100 years with technology. And I think, oh, I'd love to be there. I won't be, but I'd love to be there. And this is something I've come to terms with. I have to minister and speak into the generation that I live in, that I'm called to. I'm in this generation. We're in this generation. It doesn't matter what happened in the 1800s or 1700s. I would love to have been there in the 16th and 17th century uh, around the time of Jonathan Edwards when he preached that marvellous song Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God and a great revival sprung up right throughout the world. I would love to have sat in that congregation but I was not called to that generation. I'm called to this generation and so are you. But you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation. This is speaking to the body of Christ. You are part of the body of Christ. This is speaking into your identity. If you know who you are, a son will not behave like a stranger. If you behave like a stranger after this message, then you cannot go to God and say, oh, why? Because how you see yourself and your identity will be the horizon of what you receive from God. You see, a son that is not greeted by the father gets stroppy and would say, hey, 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 I'm your your boy, I'm your son. Yes, you're right. You should not be surprised when God moves. You should be surprised when he doesn't. And you should press in and go, hey, what what is going on here? I want to hear why, and God will tell you. Remember, when God answers your prayer, it's his direction. When he chooses not to, it's his protection. And so I want to know why. What's it say? A holy nation, his own special people. Put out your chest and realize I'm a special person. I'm pretty, you know who said this, don't you? Now, I I love people like Ron and Glenda. If they called me special, I'd, I'd be pretty happy about that. But if God calls me special, I go, wow. Ari, God says you're special. You're, uh, you're part of a holy generation, a holy nation. This is, you are part of that. If you do not begin to see your identity and who you are and what belongs to you, then you will never arrive at where God has called you to. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light that who, I can't see that on the screen now, so I'll come back to here, into his marvellous light who once were not a people but now the people of God. Now the people of God. I'm a, I represent God. Who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Mercy. You see, friends, as is the title of this message, you live from who you are. You live from who you are. Here's the progression 
and the confusion in a person's life. The progression begins with, I am a sinner and I am no good. Okay. Number two, I want to be a Christian, but I am still no good. He is good, so I want him. And you will walk your Christian walk like that, never truly understanding your identity as a son or a daughter. He is, I am not good, he is good. But I receive Christ as my Lord and Saviour. I am no one, he is everything. There's actually an element of truth in that. But if that is all the truth you have in relation to your identity, you will never ask for those things that God would have a son or a daughter ask for. I wrote this definition down for you. You may need to, if you're listening to this later on the recording, write it down or I'll have it on the, I may even put it up on the screen. When I know who he is and I accept all he has done for me, I will exalt him knowing that all he has made me is for me to stand as a son. My identity is not as a sinner anymore, but as saved. My hope and reason for who I am is because of who he is. My dependency on him reveals who I am. My identity is not that I am in the world, but it is that I am not of the world. The horizon of where my identity is will take me to where God has made me to be. It's a mouthful. I'm not going to read it again. In Acts chapter 17... Verse 26, for in him, could you all just say that with me, for in him, for in him, for in him, for in him, for in him. As a father, I have taken my children to explore the limits of what they can do. Done some crazy things too. We made a go-kart, a billy cart you would call it. It was a wee ripper. I tell you what, it had, had big wheels on the back, small wheels up the front, so it leaned up a bit, you know. It had the, it, it was, I thought it was quite safe. It had the rope. Uh, it had everything. And then we got it on this big hill. And I'm sitting in the car beside. I said, come on, boys. We'll see how fast you're going. I'll have a look at the speedo. So just as they took off, I realized um, we forgot the brakes. <laughs> as we're going down. Joshua yells out, how do we stop, Dad? <laughs> said, you don't. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> they got up to, I don't know, it was about 30 kilometres an hour down this hill. They were ripping. Of course, you know, being a, um, an intelligent father, I equipped them with, well, they didn't have any helmets either. <laughs> you know. And so they hit the gutter, the curb the billy cart flipped up <laughs> and all the boys went flying. Being the intelligent mob that we are, they got up saying, oh, that was really good, wasn't it? <laughs> let's do it again. And I said, well, actually, let's get some breaks. <laughs> Hilarious. It's not that I helped raise my children. It is that they survived me raising them. <laughs> For in him we live. And that's their testimony. When they get up into church and say, I have a testimony yet, we survived my father. <laughs> For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also of his offspring. Did you just read the last words? I am the offspring of God. Oh my goodness. 
takes the words born again to a whole new meaning, doesn't it? I am the offspring of God. I am not the offspring of your attitude toward me. I am not the offspring of your opinion about me. I am not the offspring of the things that I have done right or the things that I have done wrong. I am not the offspring of my past nor even the offspring of my parents. When I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, I have no reason to complain about then. For at that moment, when I received him, I became an offspring of God above. And from that moment forward, I started to live in newness of life. And if I live with what I cannot do, I diminish what he can do. If I live what others have done to me, I diminish and neglect what he has given up for me. Do you see your identity has everything to do with the limit of what you will receive in God? I am not a husband first, I am not a father first, I am not a pastor first, I am not a businessman first, I am not a musician first, I am not a mother first, I am none of these things first, I am a son, I am a daughter first. That is, that, that's who I am. When people say the name of Jesus in a swear word, I am very quick to go... <clears throat> Well, 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 it was just a word. Well, actually, you're speaking about my parent, my father. Please don't do that. Oh, your parent? Well, like you're the immaculate conception or something? Oh, no, 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 no. I received him as my Lord and Savior. And the Bible says that I'm part of the family of God. He is my father. And so you can imagine if I ran down your parents how you would feel well that's how I feel right now oh really tell me more you see what a wonderful way to share the truth of the gospel with someone I am not what I have done men you must receive this men you must must women are better than men than the, uh, with this one men will so often determine their value by what they can achieve today. And whether or not they have become successful. And success to a man is all different things. I am not what I have done what I, or even what I intend to do. For I am the offspring of God. I am what he has done and what he has made me to be. And so I cannot place limits on what I can do for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You cannot go up to someone who is not a Christian and say, oh, they're going to make a good Christian. You have no idea what type of Christian they're going to be. You Sure, they're probably going to be good, but you have no idea what they're going to achieve because they're not an offspring of God yet. But when they are an offspring of God, suddenly God revives and reveals and restores. And the dynamic of all that he has for them, they have a new identity. They once were lost, but now they're found. They once were blind, but now they see. You have no idea. The people are amongst you. There are prophets sitting here and you don't see yourself that way. There are pastors sitting here and you don't see yourself that way. There are musicians sitting here and you go, well, about the only thing I can play is a cone. <laughs> Hang on. You're an offspring of your ability or his. God can do things in you that you never thought possible. Can you say amen? amen. God can do in you. And those of you who know me know my background. The most likely to completely fail. And yet, God did away and had away in me. Praise the Lord for that. For all things, the word says, and we know that all things, you've got to read this in context and understand the purpose and meaning of it. It does actually not say all things work together for good. It does not say that. Well, yes, it does. 
Pastor, what are you doing? Giving this heresy or something. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Let's have a look. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew. <clears throat> he knew you before you were born. He knew the gifts and the talents. He knew what you would be. He knew the wrong that you would get up to. He knew who he was going to send to you for you to be converted to him. For whom he foreknew, he predestined. God already predestined in you what you could be. And if you don't see that, you will live less and, 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 and you will limit all that God has made you to be. He predestined you to be <coughs> this is what it says. You see, none of those ver none of those words mean anything without these words that we're about to read. Conformed, predestined to be conformed to the image. Have a look at this in relation to identity. To the image of his son. And so all things work together for good to be conformed to the image of his son. All things work together for me to be more like Christ is what it means. Wow. So my he is in the identity building shaping business. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So Jesus is the firstborn among all of you who are the offspring of God. Now give the Lord another clap offering for that one. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Jesus is the head of the family of all of us, mob. <laughs> Your identity is held, you see, friends, in the capsule of his love. And if you were born a boy and you're listening to the recording, Stay a boy, stay a man. Because if you're born male, God has a lot in store for you. Don't change that for anything. If you're born a little girl and you're growing up into a woman, stay a woman because God has something special for you. He has planned all that it is. If you're a woman, God has planned you and designed you to be a handmaiden to God himself. It was woman that scared the devil enough where Satan did not appear until woman was created. It was woman who was given the opportunity to see and declare the resurrected saviour, Jesus. You women... Don't compromise anything. Would you stand up for womanhood? And all of these, you're losing the battle, girls, I tell you. You've got all of these guys. You've been burning the bra from, what, 50 years ago in declaring your rights as a female, <clears throat> doing all of this, and now you're letting men compete in athletic sports as a woman. I would have thought you women would be the first to say, no, thanks. We've fought too hard. For you to go and taking out, for you to take our place. Do you agree with that, girls? Amen. I mean, really? Come on, guys, don't go doing things like that. You see, whatever life has thrown at you, I can tell you failure is an event, not a person. And you receive that. Believe does not mean agree. It means to acknowledge the truth. In Colossians, we read in Colossians 3, verse 12, therefore, as the elect of God, you see, he just assumes you understand this by now. You've read enough of the scriptures. You know your identity. So he just now speaks to you as a holy generation, a royal priesthood, elect of God. He doesn't assume that you would have 20 to 30 to 50 or 100 years of bad preaching around the world that would teach you other things. What he's assuming here, you've been taught, well, you know who you are. 
And so he begins by saying, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long suffering. These people knew so much of who they were in God, they started to neglect mercy and kindness. They're walking around, I'm a royal priesthood, thanks very much. So they no longer had any problem with who they were in God or their identity. They now had a problem with pride. I don't think you have a problem with pride. I think most people here are coming to grips with becoming or at conversion the offspring of God. Ephesians says to us, for we are his workmanship. Wow. God claims the ownership of your identity. Don't come to me and tell me who you think I am. Because I know who I am in him. And he's revealing that to me more and more and more. As a father, I can say this to you. When my children have said, Dad, what do you want us to be? I have said to them as they grow up, what do you want to be? Because that is what I will celebrate. How much more will the Heavenly Father say, what are the desires of your heart? Oh Lord, this is what I want to do. And God will smile and say, I place that there in you. So yes, come to me as my child and accept who you are in me. He says, for you are his workmanship created in Christ. Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All of these things are prepared beforehand by God. Now you go and walk in it. Walk in who God has created you to be. Can you receive that message today? And begin to say, oh Lord, I'm living less than who I am. Now this is not one of those motivational messages that say, you know, I'm an overcomer and yeah, you know, without God? No, no, no. I am the offspring of God. And I am becoming more like Christ. Therefore, I am a son. And as a son, I have rights and privileges. And the degrees that I have uh, given from university, from uh, Bible college and whatnot, all have Chris Maynard is granted all the following rights and privileges. And I look at my Bible and it says, you are granted these rights and privileges to walk and talk and have access to the throne of God, to be forgiven every moment that you come to me, to have my presence and my Holy Spirit with you. You have the right and the privilege to receive my voice and my direction daily, for you are my child. I have rights and privileges, and so do you. Can you say amen to that? And it is time to believe Again, what does it change? Knowing who you are, knowing what your identity is, it changes everything. It changes how I approach to God and I receive differently as a child of God, knowing who I am than someone who does not. And so, yes, you will live from who you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we receive your word. I pray in Jesus' name that we will understand who we are in you. Reveal our identity to us even more. That we would not fragment or neglect that whom you have created us to be. We would not live lower than who we were to be. But Lord, we would live in line with your calling. And so I pray this upon this church. In Jesus' wonderful name.